Oh, at eibnet.com. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing show prep last night, and I'm, I'm seeing a bunch of stuff that we mentioned yesterday. And I think, here we go. Classic examples, cutting edge societal evolution. For example, I didn't get to the audio yesterday of these, uh, of the, but I talked about it. The, the, the Axelrod and what he said about Marco Rubio. And that video played all night last night. I was shooting myself for not getting to the audio of it yesterday. But we did talk about it. This was Axelrod. He was on Slay the Nation with Bob Schieffer. And, and Axelrod said, I, I think it'd be an insult to the Hispanic community to choose Senator Rubio if, uh, if he thinks that that's somehow, if Governor Romney thinks that's sort of a get-out-of-jail-free card for all the things and positions that he's taken. And the, the, the point that I made about this, I'm going to make it again, is that the Republicans can't win for losing. The Democrats tell them they must reach out to the black community, must reach out to the Hispanic community. And so then they float a rumor that Rumio might be on the VP, and they come, you can't do that. Why, all that horrible stuff you've said about immigration and the Hispanics and the stuff that we know you mean, you hate minorities, you, that's just, you, you, you want to get out of jail free card for all those horrible rotten. So they say it's just a, a surface maneuver, not genuine. But what it really indicates is how those people think. It doesn't indicate how Romney's thinking. It indicates how Axelrod and the Democrats think. You know, my question is, in, in all of, where is Obama? Is Axelrod the candidate or is Obama the candidate? All Obama's doing are running around doing fundraisers. Last night it was Barack Obama on Broadway. Did you see that? He took over some Broadway theater for a fundraiser. Uh, and, and you've got Axelrod out acting as the candidate. He was in Boston at that press conference where he got heckled. Now he's going on TV, and he's saying the things that Obama ought to be saying, but Obama's not saying because he's too busy out uh, uh, raising raising money. Uh, but this is this is I mean I think it's a sign of the panic these people are in. And I'll tell you something else, and this dovetails with a constant, consistent theme on this program. We all, I mean us Republicans, conservatives, I don't, but I mean a lot of other people think the left is invincible. That the Democrats are invincible, that they're light years ahead of us strategically, competence-wise, when it comes to running campaigns. And I don't, I don't think that at all. I, I, I think these people are in an abject state of panic. I don't think they have the slightest idea what to do. Look what they had in 2000. For example, in 2008, that campaign was really, I think Daffy Duck could have beaten McCain for... One reason, McCain didn't even really want to win. He just wanted the resume enhancement of having candidate on, on the resume. He wasn't really trying to win. You don't suspend your campaign if you're really trying to win. Middle of an economic crisis. You don't campaign the way he did if you really want to win. You don't, you don't tell everybody on your team, now we're not going to criticize Obama, we're not going to criticize Jeremiah Wright. If you really want to win, you don't do that. So Obama's coming off eight years of Bush having been beaten up and not defending himself, and nobody in the Bush regime had defended itself. They hated the Iraq war. They convinced everybody it was a recession. Unemployment was trending down. And, and Obama is running around even now lamenting. Gosh, I wish. It's another thing we had yesterday we got sound by today. Obama wishing he had McCain instead of Romney. Oh, yeah. Yeah. John, he believed in global warming. And, and, and John believed in, in all these things that I believe in. There was an overlap. But Obama has had the, the, the road paved for him. Normally what's happened for Obama is that his associates find dirt on his opponent and get him out of the race. Like the poor Jack Ryan guy in Illinois who was running for the Senate against Obama, and somebody leaked some private divorce documents involving sex scandals, and that was the end of Ryan. I sent in Alan Keyes. So Obama basically unopposed. The only time Obama really lost an election was to Bobby Rush, when he was opposed by a legitimate candidate. The 2008, they had a cakewalk, I think, when you get right down to it. Uh, and they don't have a cakewalk this time, is my point. And I don't think these people are the best and brightest campaigners. I don't think they know what they're doing. I think they're flailing away. Uh, the fact that they can't come up with anything other than what they did in 2008, and I say all this to keep everybody fired up, intense, and confident, because there's every reason in the world to be. 
Uh, everybody falls prey to this notion that they out strategize us and that they're smarter and that they're dirtier and they're cheat more. And all, it's all that may be, some of that may be true, but they're not better. They're not smarter. They may be uh, a little less fearful of what people think of them. They don't care, for example, what's going to be said about them vis-a-vis minorities or being racist or whatever. They don't have a straight jacket that they live in like the Republicans do. But in terms of downright just base competence and strategy, uh, I mean, you know, the biggest problem Obama has in this reelection is that Romney hasn't been divorced. And so there aren't any hidden divorce papers. There's no hidden prenup. There, there's no dirt there to be found on Romney. I mean, that's why the Washington Post went out, tried to create some dirt 50 years ago. That's it. That Romney bullied some long-haired, maggot-infested, dope-smoking type kid back in prep school. And that was it. That's a typical Obama campaign. It blew up on him. It didn't work. So we get Rubio as a, as, as a rumored veep, and here goes X. Well, you know what? These guys, that's... He just wants to get out of jail card. He just wants to make make people look like he cares about Hispanics. But everybody knows that Romney and Republicans hate Hispanics and blah, blah, blah. And then we had Shrum yesterday. Do I have... Where is... uh, I'm just all over... Here it is. Grab somebody's 31. Nothing that I've told Mike is working out the way it's working out here. I've... Few people saw how we do this sound bites. You would would never believe we get one of them on the air. On a daily basis, but here's here's the second story that we had talked about this yesterday. Bob Shrum, who's never won, advising a Democrat candidate for president. He's an offer. His most recent offer with John Kerry, who by the way served in Vietnam. Bob Shrum, who I think, if you know, <laughs> let me stir it up a little bit. If Bob Shrum could be anybody, he's not. It'd be Roger Ailes. Shrum has always dreamed of himself as the Roger Ailes of the Democrat Party, but he's not. Just, just don't, don't doubt me on it. At any rate, Bob Shrum, where was he? He was on Face the Nation. You know, Bob Schieffer was head spinning Sunday because he kept asking Axelrod about the negative campaign. Why are you guys going so negative? Because, you know, Schieffer, he, he drank the Kool-Aid. He thinks we're dealing still with a messiah. And he thinks all this uh, hope and change stuff is still the order of the day. And so the Obama campaign's going typical Obama negative, dirt, and then Schieffer's head spin, he can't believe it. And he asked Axelrod, why are you going so negative? So he had trouble with that. Then Shrum came along, and Shrum actually admitted, if this election is about Obama's record, we're toast. If, if, it's, if it's about his, if the referendum on Obama, he's toast. And we had it yesterday. Uh, it made news all over the place last night. Here it is. Here are the sound bites. You got two of them. This is from Sunday's Face the Nation. You just let this be a referendum? I don't think the president could win. Because the truth of the matter is he may have created over 4.3 million jobs. He may have saved General Motors. But the country's still not back to where it needs to be. So this needs to be a choice election. A choice. So, you know, as I, as I listen to these sh- people who are... Considered heavyweights, the Democrat Party hierarchy, Shrum clearly would be one, and Clinton. I don't hear a lot of love for Obama. I mean, they're saying things that you wouldn't say if you really wanted the guy to win. You'd avoid the negatives. You don't highlight the negatives. You don't put them under the spotlight. I mean, if if you're going to talk about statements about how to win or lose it's for us to say we want to run against Obama. his record if he can't run his that's what we say for the democrats a high-ranking democrat to come out and say that sabotage and dick morris dick morris says clinton is telling people privately he wants obama to lose dick morris said on television that he knows some conservatives who know clinton that might be chris ruddy i don't know it's unnamed but apparently Clinton is telling conservatives, no, wait a minute, Clinton is telling conservatives that you got six months to save the country. That's what Dick Morris says. Clinton said, you got six months. You got six months to save the country. I'm not for this guy, but I can't can't say it publicly. Now, after Morris went on television and said that, then Clinton later goes out and endorses Obama. But the things he's doing are not helping Obama, such as the endorsement of Romney. 
So Schrum is out there saying, eh, if it's a referendum on Obama, he can't win. You don't say that about your own team. Here's the next Schrum bite, Bob Schieffer. I think there are a lot of Republicans that are out there saying, did you hear that Bob Schrum just said that if this is a referendum on Barack Obama, he would lose? Well, I think that, look, I'm being honest. If this is simply a referendum on the condition of the economy and the country, people aren't happy yet. Oh, I thought that was Bush's fault, though. I, it, isn't, the, isn't the Obama strategy to blame Bush for that? Here, Schrum is, is saying it's going to be everybody can blame Obama. Now, he may think that, but you don't say it if you're on the Obama team. You blame Bush. Even if you're heart of hearts, you know, these people are not dumb. I mean, they're, they're, they're in politics. They know full well how to lose and how to win. Well, some of them don't know how to win, but they think they do. But the one thing that you don't do is you don't undercut your candidate's theme. And the theme is Obama inherited a worse mess than anybody knew. And it's going to take longer than anybody knew to get us out of it. And the mess was given to us by Bush. And here's Schrum out there saying, well, look, I'm just being honest. If it's a referendum on the condition of the economy, he is admitting it's Obama's, not Bush's. This is big stuff. And I can tell you it's double big stuff because Shrums are, are Schieffers. Can you, do, 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 uh, you know what you just said uh, here on a, on a state-controlled show? Well, they're stunned out there. Of course, we got Wisconsin that's, uh, that's going on today. This is a showdown. What's happening in Wisconsin, the recall. Boy, these poor people in Wisconsin, I have to tell you, seems like I've had an election every two weeks for the past six months.